Hey, welcome back everyone. In this video, we'll look at two other operations on entire tables. So we'll look at first altering a table. How do I add a column to a table if I later on decide that there's not enough columns in there? And then we'll look at how to drop a table entirely so that it is no longer in the database. It's gone, including all the data that was in it. So first, let's look at altering a table. Let's first look at what is living in our students table. We have these seven students here. Let's say that at some point in the future, we decide that, oh, we want to also keep track of whether the student is in state or out of state. So right now we don't have that capability because we only have these four columns. So how do we add a column to this database? Turns out it's pretty simple. We just use this alter table statement, put the name of the table you'd like to alter, the keyword add column, put the name of the column you would like to add, and the data type of the column you would like to add. In this case, since in state is either true or false, it can only take two values basically. We're gonna be using this bit one, which basically acts like a true false since you can only set bit one as zero or one. So we can use this in state column to keep track of whether the student is an in state or out of state student. So if we do that, and then we again select everything from students, we see that we have this in state column. And since we haven't said what data to fill into it, it just sets it all as none or null in SQL until such time that you fill these values in. And you can fill them in using the update statement in SQL, which we looked at before. Now, another way to alter a table, it's not just that you can add a column, you can also rename the entire table. So let's say that we have this table called students, but for some reason we'd like to rename it to student data. So we just use this alter statement, alter table students, rename to student data. So we do that. Now, if we try to select everything from students, we get an error because it says there's no such table as students because we just renamed that table to student data. If we instead do select everything from student data, we get exactly the same table that we had up here. Now, before I move on to dropping a table, I do want to mention that some SQL environments will have support for different alter table operations. Like if you want to delete a column, like let's say I no longer want the in-state column. So um, sometimes you can do alter table students drop column in state and that'll work. It doesn't work in this environment and it won't work in several environments. So you have to use kind of creative workarounds. Like how would I use only what I have to get rid of this column? Um, if I had to do it workaround way, I would probably um, create a new table, which only has these four columns that I want to keep and then just copy the existing data into that new table and then drop my old table and then rename my new table as my old table name. So I know that sounds a little bit convoluted, but sometimes you have to do it that way. And sometimes you'll get lucky and you'll be in a SQL environment where you can just drop columns and it'll be fine. So make sure to check on that. Now the last part is this infamous drop table statement in SQL. This statement gets a lot of attention, even if you're not super into computer science, um, just because it's used in SQL injection, which we'll see in the next video. But before talking about SQL injection, here's the basic way to drop a table. Let's say you no longer want student data. So you just do drop table student data. Couldn't get simpler than that. We do that. If we try to select everything from student data, we cannot because it is gone. So that's how you drop a table in SQL. All right, so next we'll look at SQL injection.